the performance of your HPLC system is mostly dependent on to your columns performance. I mean other parameters are also equally important like your tubings, mobile phase preparation, pump health etc. But we always say that the column is the heart of an HPLC system. So to retain this performance throughout your analysis, I think evaluation of the column performance is very important activity. Many companies do have the procedure for column evaluation. And in this today's video, we will try to understand how one can decide on to this column evaluation procedure, maybe in terms of selection of the parameter, selection of the mobile phase and selection of the components. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am founder of Pharma Growth Hub and I am on the mission to help people to get an absolute clarity on various technical topic. So as a part of this video book, we will try to understand how one can perform the column evaluation and at the end, we will also talk about some of the column handling uh, procedures. It is always preferred to have uh, a column performance mixture at least containing three components. The one component should be eluting very early and the two components can be eluting quite late. So this is going to help you in understanding the retention behavior on your column for three different types of the components. In case if you only select one component, which is let us say late eluting, but in case if the column has a problem with the early eluting compound, so in that situation, you are going to miss on the column issues with the early eluting compounds. So for that reason, I think having the compounds eluting across the chromatographic run late eluting, mid eluting and the early eluting. So what could be the, the characteristics of this compound? It could be a neutral, acidic and basic compounds. In case of uh, let us say normal phase chromatography, these neutral compounds can elute very early in a wide volume. However, in case of your reverse phase chromatography, the same neutral compound can get eluted quite late. So select the compounds in a such a way that you have the retention time at wide volume in the middle and at the late of the chromatographic run. So let us now discuss about some of the evaluation parameters. Now these are the parameters you can consider for the evaluation of the column performance. The first one is plate count or efficiency. The plate count of the solute eluting at k dash equal to 0 means the compound which is eluting in a wide volume or early eluting compound is generally useful in indicating how well the column is packed. So you must have seen that uh, when the column was new, the pick shape was very sharp, isn't it? But as the column grows old, then the, the pick shape becomes a little broad and that has resulted into the drop in the plate count. Now this indicates that your column packaging has started getting disturbed. And you must also say that this particular effect has impact onto the early eluting compound. Sometimes your late eluting compound may be having a accepted number of plate count, but your early eluting compound will get badly impacted because of the disturbed packaging materials. And that's the reason why, that's the reason why we talked about a three component mixture with one compound eluting early to understand your column packaging health. The plate count of the retained taste solutes indicates packing quality relating to chemical interaction. See this, why these compounds are eluting late? In case of uh, hydrophobic interaction, especially in case of reverse space chromatography, your non-polar compounds are going to elute late because they are interacting with the active sites, C8 or C18 sites. And if there is any problem with the C8 or C18 sites, if they are getting disturbed or they are getting decreased because of the solubilization over a period of column usage, your retention time can get changed. Maybe your pick shape of those late eluting compound also get uh, disturbed and that will result into the drop in the plate count. 
So the drop in the plate count of the late retained compound is going to keep check on the chemical interaction or the health of your bonded stationary phase. A significant decrease in plate count uh, that is N with uh, K dash may indicate deteriorated bed, pa bed packing structure and or poor diffusion in the stationary phase because the diffusion is going to be important parameter for efficiency or the number of interaction of your compound with the stationary phase. If the diffusion gets decreased, obviously your plate count or number of interactions will also get decreased. So that's the intention of having the late eluting compounds in your mixture of uh, performance. Again, the pigtailing, needless to say, it is also one of the very important parameter. A significantly tail pick for the basic test solute on a bonded phase packing suggests interaction with the free silanol groups. This is one of the secondary interaction generally take place in case of protonated silanol with the sorry deprotonated silanol and having the protonated base compound. So this interaction is uh, not preferred one because this always uh, brings the, the tailing to the pick. So in case if the silanol effect is getting increased, that is going to get reflected into the increased tailing for the basic compound. So peak tailing also needs to be evaluated during the column performance. The capacity factor, variability in K prime indicates variations in packing surface area or bonded phase concentration. Sometimes in case if your pH is very extreme, your silica may get dissolved and because of that, your bonded phase concentration can get decreased. And if there is a less amount of stationary phase available, less amount of interaction and that will result into the reduction into the K dash or the retention time. So in case if there is a variability in the retention time or K dash that indicates that your packing surface area is getting reduced. Resolution is one of the very key aspect of your chromatographic separation. The drop in resolution can be attributed to poor column performance or lower interaction. And this is one of the key reason why many times you have to uh, change the column because your resolution is getting dropped. Column back pressure is always going to limit the usage of your column beyond certain pressure. You will not be able to use the column because of the high column back pressure. So the column pressure indicates whether the column is partially plugged for any reason, especially in case of you are using the mobile phase containing buffers. And if there is a microbial growth taking place, maybe onto the frit of the column or inside the stationary phase, your column's back pressure can certainly get high. There is a very important note. We talked about few important parameters which can evaluate the column performance. But always remember, and I read this, normally, the test system should be selected with mobile phases of low viscosity and simple low molecular weight solutes. So why your method should be very simple, like simple low viscous mobile phase and low molecular weight solute. Here is the reason in the bracket to confirm that the other factors are not the performance limiting factors. That means your mobile phase is not the limiting factor. Your analyte alone is not the limiting factor. Your tubings of the system is not the limiting factor. Whatever poor performance you are seeing in the chromatographic run, maybe increased tailing, drop in the theoretical place, in that situation can only and only be attributed to the column because you are evaluating the column performance. So other parameters should be very ideal and as good as possible. So they should not become the late you know the, the limiting uh, factors for the column performance in this situation whatever happens bad is only because of the column performance and we'll talk about some of the important uh, handling tips how the column shall be handled or how should not be handled the first one is uh, you should use the carefully distilled or filtered mobile phases for the analysis attention must be given when using aqueous mobile phases example buffer solutions because the bacterial growth can take place on the column frit and inside the column bed. 
So it's very important how you are going to avoid the microbial growth because of the usage of the high aqueous space mobile case content. There are certain suggestions to add uh, organic solvent into the mobile phase if possible, so that will resist the mobile phase, uh, sorry, microbial growth. The use of inline solvent filters like 0.5 micron porosity and the pre-filtration of the sample before the analysis can always help to protect your column's health. Vibration, mechanical stress, shock, and extremes of the temperature always should be avoided. The column sh should always be used well below the highest operating pressure of your uh, column and also the SPLC system. Reverse washing of column generally should be avoided to prevent shifting of packed bed and performance degradation. So sometimes there is observation that if you reverse the column and then flush, you will find the improvisation in column performance for a certain amount of time. But eventually you are degrading the column performance on the longer term. So that has to be avoided. Storage in aqueous mobile phases outside the pH range of 2 to 8 should be avoided. Always stored the column in shipping solvent or as proposed by the manufacturer. The drying out of column should be avoided. For storage, always use the end cap so that the column will not get dry. So these are all about how one can determine your column performance and how to maintain the health of column. Thank you so much.